What's up y'all, Daniel, NewYearBarbering.com. And on today's video, I wanted to talk about really why, you know, taking care of your business is like taking care of a plant. Um, now before I kind of go into at least the theory and like the real life examples, I, I mean, I, I think it's proper to kind of explain what the hell I mean by this, right? Because as a business, your job is to make money and grow the business and, you know, have be able to have a good life to live from that business to where it's not stressful or you know you're not like selling your soul to like not enjoy your life or whatever the hell you want it to do as a vehicle for you to achieve the goal that you want to achieve in life um and next to me actually i have an example of this which is my actual plant um so this is a plant that i actually neglected and like you know neglecting a plant like this an actual living thing is no different than neglecting like your business because I like to think of a business as an actual living organism as, as itself. And I think having the mental model of that can help a lot of individuals in the barber industry at least know where they're messing up at and have a, a clear sense of like what they should be doing. Because when I get on calls with barbers who want to join the Elevated Mentorship Program, which is a program that I run uh, for my company, The New Era Barbering, um, that helps barbers who are you know stuck anywhere between four to ten k per month be able to double or triple that. And really, why somebody gets stuck like that is because, well, they neglect their plant overall. So we'll get into the whys. We'll get into like how this actually makes sense in the mental model. So you know you can at least start seeing for yourself and dissect your business and figure out like what the hell's wrong with this thing and like what you should actually do and get some clarity on it because. Not too many people know exactly why they're stuck or what they should do next. And a lot of times people, and barbers will, if they're stuck, they'll just say, well, I just need to raise my price, which might be the worst thing possible. And we'll get into that. So to start off, why I have a plant here that kind of seems healthy and kind of seems not so healthy. Like, you know, it's a weird looking plant, first of all. Shout out to Ikea. Um, I really liked it at first because it was weird looking, right? And it was unique, but it looked a lot healthier. Like, um, I'll try to get up close. If you could see, it's not, you know, the healthiest right here. Um, and this is from neglect, because I didn't water it for a while. I didn't have it in proper sunlight. And even some of the branches on this thing, like even though now it's, 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 it's grown pretty nicely, um, you can see like right here, like most of the plant used to be like this, where there's just nothing on it. Like there might be like a leaf or two. Oop, I'm spilling water. Um, damn. Oh well. It's the cost of a, a good example. Um, but the whole plant used to be like this. And I remember I used to have people over at my apartment and uh, they would kind of make fun of my plant. And I kind of took it personally like, don't make fun of my plant. And people would just tell me, you should get a different one. Throw it out. It's dead. Like, what are you doing with this thing? It's weird. And you know, people kind of have the same thing with their business. If it's like not doing well, or if it's being neglected like the plant was, I don't want to pick it up because I don't want to spill. They'll just say, oh well, I should get a new one. I should get a new business, right? Or, oh well, I'll just do something weird with it, right? I'll throw it away or I'll add, I'll, or they'll just say like, oh, I know, this business isn't doing well or what I want to do. I should get another one along with this one. So. I can have double the neglected things, right? And you can see where this thinking really gets messed up at. And we just need kind of some real world examples. So what I did to at least fix this neglected plant, right, is I actually just started taking care of it. I didn't really listen to anybody who was telling me I should get a different plant, something more beautiful, because this one was ugly and like falling apart and it, the soil was dry. And I mean, there's even like some remnants of like how it used to look with like dead leaves. If you can kind of see, I don't know if it'll focus. There we go. So there's like some dead leaves at the very bottom that I still need to pick, take out. But it's like a good, for me at least, it's like a good way to like keep me focused on like, you know, keep this thing healthy, which you, what you should be doing with your business. And, you know, I didn't listen to anybody else of like, you know, I should get a new plant or anything. I just started taking more responsibility of this one. I said, what's the point of getting a different one, a different plant, if I can't take care of this one? Because the same thing's gonna happen, right? So what I did was I just started thinking, I didn't, I didn't do any research. I don't know plants, obviously, because I neglected this one. Um, I don't really know why I even got it in the first place, but I had it. I thought it would look good, and then it didn't. But I just thought, well, 
the plant obviously needs probably to be watered every day, right? Um, and then I should probably also give it some proper sunlight and you know, cause I just wasn't doing those two things. And I was like, well, that probably seems like the easy thing I can do right now versus getting a new one and then having more responsibility on my hands and probably fucking that one up too. So I just started doing that each and every single day and my apartment gets a lot of great light. So I just started every morning when I woke up, I just watered it, put it in the light and go through a workout and then when the light would move, put it somewhere else, check to make sure I, if it needed more water, give it more water. And I kind of just did that for a while and just kind of, I just kind of forgot about it. I just, it just got into a routine until like one day, I mean honestly this morning I, I like, I got it and I was like shit. I didn't even realize it was like this, like it, it really wasn't like this. I wish I had some before pictures, but it's looking nice, right? And it's the same thing of what you should be thinking of your business. Like, yeah, maybe you're not at that point, you know, where you're making four to 10K per month and you're not stuck at that level. Maybe you're somewhere like $1,000 or maybe even less. Well, you should probably take care of it. But the same is also with if you're stuck at that four to 10K per month mark as a barber, like, you know, you probably put in some work, it's been hard and you thought, you know, you could just get away with coasting and now you have like this neglected, like, you know, brush now and it's just kind of shitty and it's almost like not that fun because it's not growing, it's not as exciting as it once was because, you know, you, you kind of just got lazy at the wheel. So, you know, you should, like I said before, you shouldn't like when you look at your business or as a barber, if you're stuck there, you shouldn't go out and figure out like, or just listen to people like, oh man, I should go and do this or I should now add this or I should, you know, go do something else. Like there's still a lot more you can wring out and like really improve the business. Like we have barbers that we help in the program that, you know, we're stuck at that 4K per month mark and now are doing anywhere between 15 to 25K a month, right? And it's not like we doubled or tripled their, um, you know, their work, we almost cut down their work and we're able to make, able to get them to, to make more because we just, we just understand how to build a business properly, right? We're not trying to bullshit you and trying to like have you do more haircuts or, you know, an individual was doing like 40, 50 haircuts a, a, a week. Now he's only doing 35 and making what he used to make in a month, right? And that's really cool. Um, and he, he's making that per week now. And that's really cool to see because it's a direct reflection of like when you understand like the right inputs that grow something and you don't neglect it and you do the proper inputs, well, you'll get the output that you actually want to have. Now, there is no difference between these two, right? So like, for example, how does this like translate to a barbering business? Well, let's say for a plant, right? You need to have like some good soil first of all, right? You can't just put rocks in here and expect this thing to grow. Like it needs to have nutrients, it needs to have like a good solid soil, at least from my understanding. So anybody who knows plants like that, don't thrash me in the comments because this is just like, I guess common sense, right? Uh, I don't know anything about like this stuff too much. Um, but it's, you know, the soil is also like kind of, it, it kind of translates to like your service and like your skill set. Like, you know, it kind of starts from there. If you can't give a good quality cut or you're lazy or you kind of just like, half-ass things because you're not getting compensated right now like don't expect anything to grow from that right like you you have to like take care of that first like without that that's kind of like the, the base foundation which i think most barbers work on and you know a lot of barbers have good soils a lot of barbers don't have good soil um you know so that's the first thing the second thing um because like no, yeah, again to no clientele is going to grow from that if you can get that metaphor right if you don't have a good service or you don't you know cut hair that well like you have to not be lazy with that thing. Um, and the second thing is like no water, right? So, you, okay, you can have good soil, right? So you have, can have a good skill set, but if you don't have the water, like it's not gonna go through as photosynthesis and go through all that process and, and to be able to grow and like, you know, take in more sunlight and to, so it can survive longer. Um, and the same thing with barbering business with, if there's no water, there, you know, there's no, inflow of new clientele that you control, right? Like, you know, it would be phenomenal if this plant could like, on its own, like just water itself, like, you know, intuitively be like, all right, turn on the water, I'm, I'm thirsty, I'm ready to grow, you know, at optimal time so we can get the best out of it. But it has to rely on me to water it. Um, and, you know, that's not the best thing because sometimes I forget and like I neglect it. And as a barber, you shouldn't, you shouldn't just wait on other outside forces to water you with new clients. 
you should be already, I guess, digging your well or creating your flow of clients um, you know, that you control. Now, this could be from organic marketing, this could be from paid ads. Obviously, we have a certain system and structure that we do inside of Elevated Mentorship, but you know, you can go whatever way, but you just have to have something, right? Because that, that you have to have water, which obviously I filled up too much because now it's all over the floor, um, for, to then you know, water the soil so it can get up in the roots, so it can grow, um, right? The next thing is like not enough sunlight, right? So like sunlight, obviously you can have the water, you can have the soil, which is your, is your service, you could have the water, which is, you know, new client flow, but you know, without sunlight, the, the plant wouldn't grow. Like if it's in complete darkness and it doesn't know where it's at or it doesn't take in and be able to have photosynthesis to be able to take place, like nothing's gonna happen from this thing. It's just kind of gonna like be wimpy. Um, and the same thing can be like if you don't have the proper tracking in your business, right? If you don't know what's going on, it's, it's the same thing as like this plant being in the dark. You're kind of just, you're blind, right? You don't know what's working. You don't know what is working, what isn't working. Like I talk to a lot of barbers who, yeah, sure, they're on Instagram and let's say they're getting phenomenal numbers. Let's say they have a lot of followers for no reason, right? Yet they only produce like two to three clients from that per month. That's not very efficient, right? And that's from poor tracking. That's also from like, not understanding what their North Star is in a business. You know, like that almost, that's almost like you're doing something for the wrong reason at that point. And almost like, what the hell are you doing at that point? So, you know, we want to be able to not only have a good service, we want to be able to have a new client flow, but we also want to be able to track to really refine it and improve it so that we can actually make use of these two things to get the growth, right? And that's what tracking um, and analyzing and data does for our business. And we have a couple of different spreadsheets that we use at Elevated Mentorship that helps barbers really pinpoint their problems because without proper tracking, you don't know what the exact problem is. And to get growth in business, you have to be able to pinpoint the exact problem so you know where to put all your focus on because in theory, if you focus on the correct problem and f solve that problem, it should fix everything in the business to get you to move forward like 10X, right? And if you don't know what the problem is, you could be spending the time doing the wrong thing, getting, uh, you know, spending a lot of time doing the wrong thing, trying to solve the wrong issue. And then when you do solve it, nothing still happens. And this is how most barbers run their business is completely blind and dark, almost like trying to search for a needle in the haystack. And that's not good. The next thing is really lack of consistent care, right? So I, you can do all those things, right? The correct soil, which is uh, service, correct water, new clients coming in, and the sunlight, which is tracking and everything like that. But if you're not consistent with it, like it's all for nothing, right? And, and that just goes into work ethic. Like I have to wake up every morning and do all these things to make sure this thing grows. Because if I just do it once, it doesn't really fucking matter. Like this thing isn't gonna grow. And the same thing with a business. It doesn't really matter if you have all those things. If you don't keep up with it, well, what the hell is the damn point then of doing all that work? So it's not like you're gonna be just, you know, getting the massive growth or getting the results that you actually want from just one input or one day of, you know, staying consistent or like one day, seven days off, two days here. Like, you know, these things just don't work like that. They, they require constant care just like a plant does or just like any living thing. Like imagine like if you worked out and like, you know, you ate unhealthy and slept really bad six days out of the week and you did everything really good only one day out of the week, thinking that, oh, I'm gonna grow, like get muscular. Well, it's not gonna happen that way, right? And you know, this just stems from like bad thinking, bad work ethic, laziness, um, and really just a lack of responsibility overall, right? Like you kinda need to be able to think clearly because if you can think clearly and think rationally, you know, the things that, you know, pull you away, that get you lazy, watching Netflix, going out having drinks and like partying or smoking a lot of weed or whatever these things, these things like you start to really like not enjoy as much because logically you're like, wait, I, I kind of want to grow this damn thing. Why the hell am I still like messing around with like this and like you can see the direct input output and it doesn't make sense. Like it kind of gets you really mentally fried. But to the typical person, like they're really just hardwired for like um, short-term gratification. And like you have to think long-term wise and you have also have to like really think about sacrificing a lot. Like 
you know, a business is sacrifice. Success requires the sacrifice and it requires you to sacrifice what you like right now to then be able to build something to reap benefits in the long term, right? You, you don't get a direct relationship immediately. Um, and if you do, like, it's probably from the lottery or something sketchy like that. Like, you know, it's like almost like by chance, but natural law doesn't work that way. And a lot of times, especially like whether I'm talking to a barber on a call or like, you know, even working with a barber, a customer in the new, in the new era barbering, like, you know, we have to really not like rewire their thinking, but like, you know, we have to create a new person all the time, right? You have to become somebody new because who you are right now will not get the results. And you have to learn how to become that person. You have to you learn how to think to become that person. And you have to understand like, you know, how the world works. There's always a perception and reality of how people think the world actually does work. The perception is this is supposed to be easy. I'm supposed to be given everything or like, you know, maybe you have a different perception, but the reality is like, the world doesn't work like that, right? Natural law doesn't work like that. Like, you know, you can look at plenty of other examples. Um, I'm kind of blanking out on anything else because I'm really just thinking about my damn plant. And also like, I don't know if anybody noticed, but I had to make a cut because I actually, when I went to, I tried to change my audio and almost did it again. And actually like, I went to go edit it and like, I admit I'm missing like five minutes of a video. So I'm having to make it up again, right? Um, but it's all good because I actually know this information. So it's not like you might get something new and something better. Um, and that's kind of like what we work with people on in the, in the program. I mean, not only do we work with you to make sure you have the correct service, right? And, and this means not just like, improve, like no matter what, even if you think you're a hair god, like you got to improve this damn thing at some point. Like the clientele in the market that we want to get you up to, to like do one fifty, two hundred dollars $200 a haircut, you're going to have to get a lot better with your skill set and you're not going to get there with what you're doing right now. And, we'll, and like we work with barbers on how to get this. We don't do tutorials or anything like that. We do things very, um, almost like an engineer. Like what are the components? What are like, we think from first principles, like we really just, it's, it's a very different way of thinking about how to improve your skill set because it's not just watching something and like doing it for no reason. Like there's a re there's a why and an outcome we're trying to get from just one thing, not like, because we want to our fates look better, which doesn't help. And we also help with client acquisition. We're pretty damn good at that. And that's actually like how I started New Era Barbering because I was just really good at getting clients. And when I say like client acquisition, like, you know, some people can water their business with, you know, gasoline, meaning like, you know, like you can water this thing. Maybe that's not a good point because like gasoline catch fire, but like, you know, you can water like, let's say a plant with um, soda, and you're like, oh, it's liquid, it works. It's like, nah, it's not gonna get you the output you want. And the same thinking is when you just keep on getting clients who are, you know, not the high quality people that you want to be around, like they're not, they're not rewarding you tip wise or they're not in terms of, you know, they're just a mix up. And there are people like that that just won't respect your business, they're late. And we wanna make sure we get high quality, high paying clients that we can give the proper service that we do give to them. Um, and also get rewarded so we don't feel like we're getting cheaped because there are those people who just don't tip. You're not supposed to be getting tipped. You know, yeah, of course you have to work to get it. Like, I can already hear like, or read comments that are gonna be gone on this damn thing about that. But you know, if you are good at what you do, and you know, that's who I work with is people who are actually good at what they fucking do. Um, you know, you need to also be good at getting the clients that, that know that that is a good service and that they that you solve that problem that they have really well for them and that you could service them and that they're super happy because it's not about just like trying to take money out of people's pockets it's about solving a problem for them that they have that's unique to them that you already kind of intuitively do and a lot of barbers do that they just don't know what they're looking at because most industry just focuses on the sharpest fade or the sharpest lineups or enhancements and stuff like that and that's good but you know we want to get like deadly with our business and strategical, right? As asymmetric warfare, we want to find like, you know, those little points that can get us the biggest returns. Um, and so we're really good at, at understanding how to not only like, let's say you are getting clients, really refine this thing so that we can go ahead and scale up the business without having to worry about, you know, not making money because as a business, you need clients to make money. And you know, when you go up in pricing, you still need to get clients because most of those clients are going to leave and I'm dripping water all over again. Kind of like how that water is coming out of the, uh, the bowl. And we're just really good at understanding what to do, how to do that. And the perception of it is like, you know, 
just marketing. But the reality of it is like most barbers who just try to copy everybody else, like they're not getting the same results because we have, again, too, sunlight, right? Or the tracking that goes into that. And we'll show you how to track. We'll show you the softwares that you have to install. We'll show you how to use it. We'll show you how to read it. And we'll show you how to refine and, and like problem solve on it to really understand your business as a whole. Because most people, again, too, don't understand their business as a whole. Um, and then, you know, the final, or not the final piece, we have two more pieces, but and the next piece, like which we went over is like, you know, you have to consistently care for this thing if you want to get results like this. And, you know, you have to think very differently. And we show you how to do that because, you know, success doesn't happen with who you are right now. You have to change yourself. And we show you how to think properly. We show you, you know, what the real world is like, not the perception of what most barbers want you to think it is. And, you know, just how to run a proper business, uh, financially wise, understanding what it means to going up, like how, what, you know, reading all the stuff that goes into upping prices, what needs to happen, what doesn't need to happen, what to focus on, what not to focus on. I mean, just, th- I mean, to me, it's simple stuff, but to a lot of barbers, I mean, it's, it's you know, you can go in a lot of different directions with this thing. Um, and that's what we focus on, is actually building a really, or growing a really damn good plant, a really healthy plant. Not something that just has the perception of it, but is like rotting on the inside, kind of like this one is a little bit, but I'm taking care, better care of it. But, I just spilled all again. But actually building something that, you know, actually looks good because it is good. And that kind of feeds into the lot to my last point with this thing, which is, you know, with this, so I have great soil, which is a great service. Um, I'm watering it, which is bringing in new clients that are healthy, not just clients who are gonna, you know, bash my business or um, gonna make my life a living hell to cut hair every day and just not enjoy it. Um, and I know how to highly acquire them, why, how to get more of them, because I track, I give myself sunlight, I could see actually, right? I know exactly where the problems are at, if things aren't where they need to be at, how to fix them very quickly and get everything back up and running. And, you know, I have a good work ethic because I'm consistent. I kind of change how I think about business, how I think about myself, how I think about the world. And, you know, the last piece is, you know, I need, once I kind of do that, I need a new pot, right, to, to get this thing in, which is actually why I, in reality, need to do with this one. I actually need to get a different pot for this. And, you know, that can correlate to, honestly, like, the reality that, you know, if you're, if you're building a business, it's not to make money, it's to keep money and to build a war chest and to build cash reserves. Because that's really the only thing that matters. Again, to the perception a lot of barbers love to have and just people in general, when they make some money, they like to flash it to make it seem like they have more. But the reality is they don't have that much. It's really funny when I have a barber who schedules a, uh, a call with me and I can see, of course I asked for their Instagram and I can see on their Instagram like, they, they, they're flashing jewelry, they're flashing money, they're like, have all these fancy cars around them. And you could just tell, like, I could just tell like, oh, this is, this guy's, you know, or, or woman is gonna be, they're gonna have the worst business possible. And it typically ends up that way. And it's always the quiet ones who actually take care of business, um, actually have put themselves in the right position to now scale up. Because, you know, we want to have cash reserves. We don't wanna be having like a family and like, bills and all this stuff and be living month to month, right? Cause that's pretty dumb. And you know, I talked to barbers who, you know, who are making like six to eight K a month who only have like two K in the bank because of bad spending habits. So if you know, this is something that like, I try to like at least really implement hardcore with, you know, uh, customers that come into the elevated mentorship program that I'm working with, because there is like this, different mentality that most barbers have of like what they're optimizing for. Are you actually optimizing to like get yourself eventually out of barbering? Cause that requires you to build the proper business, right? Have a good structure, build, have a healthy plant that actually gets the damn job done. And also building a cash reserves that can, you know, you're not going to stress out all the damn time about. And you know, while most people are just trying to go into this for like, a facade or like a perception of like what success looks like. And that's not really good unless that's what you want. But most, more times than not, those individuals will just be barbers for the rest of their lives, which again, too, if that's what you want, I mean, I can't say anything bad about that. Like, you know, if that's what you want, fine. But if that's not what you want and you're going and you're acting like that, well, that's probably not something good, right? And you should probably think about what you're doing. And like mental models like this, at least seeing how one thing can also translate to something else and you could see the clear mistakes of like what's happening and how to fix it and like 
what you should be doing, you know, it's everywhere. And you just kind of need to like think really hard. Um, because a lot of times, a lot of people just won't think about the problem. They'll just kind of like whine and cry and be like, oh, the shop owner doesn't give me enough clients or the shop owner is trash or something like that. They'll make some excuse and point the damn finger instead of saying, hey, <laughs> I neglected this damn thing. Like the plant didn't die on its own. The business didn't die on its own. This thing was all from me. Um, and that's why I try to really install in like all the, the, the customers of Elevate Mentorship that I work with. It's just like, look, this thing's on your, this, I, I could give you all the things that will get your business up to be able to, you know, double or triple income, be able to charge more and work less, but you still have to do it. And if you don't do it, like in the day, this is on you. I can, I will reach out, I will keep you accountable and I will make sure that I have, give you everything to succeed. But at the end of the day, if you don't want to succeed, like I can't do anything for you. And that's just the, the straight up truth. And sometimes that is the most like sobering thing for a barber to hear when they start working with me is like just the honest truth of like, look, this is still going to be on you. And like, you know, I'm going to help you as much as possible, like as humanly possible. But at the end of the day, like the ball is in your court and you almost kind of start taking some responsibility. I like to think about it, about it too, of like, you know, when I hear barbers, let's say on calls that I have that, you know, they have this type of thinking where they've neglected their plant, yet they want to like add more plants on. I'm like, look, you know, before you go and start buying some real estate and buying a bunch of houses, you should probably like learn how to clean your room first, right? You should probably learn how to take care of what you already have before you start trying to add more on. And that men that mental model at least is like less is more, right? The less that you have to take care of, the more quality it will be. Um, instead of like, you know, we see people with in their Instagram bios, they do, they do like 20 different businesses. They're like CEO of this, founder of this, Forex this, crypto this, like it has all crazy shit in there, right? And I look at that, I'm like, you know, maybe to somebody who's unaware is gonna look at that like, wow, you, you know what you're doing. To me, like, that just looks like you have no clue what the hell you're doing and you're probably like, cause there's no way in hell if you have 20 things that any one of those 20 things is that good. Like they're probably really subpar. And think about it, let's say, just for example, 20 things that you do. Well, somebody that is 120th your skill level who only does that one of those things is probably on the same level as you. And if that's not sobering, and if that's not like a slap in the face, so I remember he, like thinking that and hearing that and reading that before, I'm like, shit, I got this thing fucked up, <laughs> right? Because I was like trying to run the new era of barbering. I was trying to cut hair still and build that business. I was like doing YouTube, podcast, uh, had like a, a, a product. Like I, I, like I did this stuff and it's pretty dumb at the end of the day because it's, when you do it, it's just like, you kind of see what everybody else is doing and not having success with it. And you're like, oh, this is just for show. This is like a perception of what people want you to think. All right. And I just made the decision to stop it all because I want to live in reality, not perception. So I hope you found this of value. And you know, if you do have like, let's say your business is like neglected right now and you want to get something that is like growing and you're at that four to 10K per month mark and kind of stuck and you would like some help, um, what I'll do is I'll put a link down below and you can book a call and we can see if it's a good fit to work together so that I can help you build your business and that you can actually start getting the results that you want and not have to overkill yourself. Because a lot of times what barbers do when they are at that mark is they think that they should just do double or triple more what they're doing right now to get that or add two or three more businesses onto that to get more income, which is not proper thinking and we can just do that with two services, a haircut and a haircut with beard and a really well thought out and a really well structured business and doing the proper things to actually grow it. Um, and you know, of course you have to at least be a little bit open-minded to get help too, right? Like you can't be stuck up because I was pretty stuck up with this plant. I was like, oh, it's my plant. Don't talk shit about it. And then I had to be pretty open-minded. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And my mom knows what she does with plants. My mom gardens a lot. So I had to call her up and be like, hey, what the hell do I do with this thing, right? And that's how I kind of came, came to the conclusion of like, well, I should get a bigger pot. So sometimes you can at least take what you know, like what I knew was watering and sunlight to a good level. But to get to that next level of growth, you kind of, you kind of need to be open for help. And that's why I like to think about like, you know, even what I do, because even for me, I 
I've invested a lot in terms of like mentors and coaches to help me because I'll be very honest with myself and be like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I need some help with this thing. And always like, I, I just never knew what I didn't know, right? And like that thought always kind of scares me because like I can think I'm doing, I can think that this is pretty damn good. And then somebody comes along that actually knows what the hell they're doing and they're like, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, fix this. I'm like, shit, I was fucking up the whole time. And it's really sobering. And like, if, if for me, I really enjoy growth. And so if that's somebody like yourself and you're really open to at least, and honest with at least getting help and you have the work ethic to get there, um, well, you should book a call and we can just have a chat and we can see if you are a good fit. And I'll be completely honest with you if your business isn't up to par and there really is nothing to lose except maybe 45 minutes of your time. And at least we'll get you in the right direction of thinking wise of like, right, this is your problem. This is what needs to happen for growth and you know, what direction you should be going in. Okay. And all I would ask is at least give me enough information on the application when you book the call so I can have enough to understand and really diagnose your business to give you a proper call to make sure that you are a good fit for the program. So if I don't have enough information, it's like going to the doctor, right? You wouldn't go to the doctor to try to tell them about, you know, your car. Like that doesn't make sense. You would go to them telling them about your body and like what's going on. How do you feel? What are all the different ailments so that they have the, as much information as possible to at least diagnose you properly. Cause a lot of the times, what is it like maybe 25 to 30%. I only work about 25 to 30% of like people who even hop on calls with. Um, and that's just reality because like, again, to maybe 70, 75% of people or 70, yeah, 70, 75% of people just are not a good fit. Their business isn't at that moment in time. And I, I accept that, right? And I think it's just good to at least have a different perspective. So again, too, if that is you, you're four to four to 10K per month, you're stuck, you're open to getting some help, I'll, I'll put that link down below so you can go ahead and book a call with me. Um, but I hope you did at least take away some value from like this. Maybe if you have a plant, you can look at it and be like, shit, I need to take care of it. Maybe you look at your room and you're like, shit, why am I trying to buy a house? I can't even keep, I can't even like take care of my own like room that I have. It's messy. There's sticky underwear lying around. There's like rats running all over the place, right? Maybe you, I don't know, maybe you're even looking at your business and hopefully that you are at this point in time. It's kind of seeing the same mental models. Maybe you're looking at your body thinking, shit, I need to get my shit together. I think I'm like good right now. There's no way in hell I'm good right now. So if you did enjoy this video and this did bring you some value, well, go ahead and drop a like on this video. Uh, I've been a little bit more active as well as like, if you want to see more, of course you can look at more videos on my YouTube. I also have a podcast that I upload to um, that I do upload different content than this because I really enjoy doing the podcast because I don't have to be forced to like focus on one point and I can just like look around and think and we can get, I, I do have to give a little bit more in-depth advice or just in-depth ideas on there for business. Um, and you can view that if you go to the new and go to the resources section, you click on podcasts, you can start listing those episodes. Or if you want to, I have uh, the link down below as well too. So again, if you want to book a call at the four to five, four to 10 K per month mark, want some help, I'll leave the link down below. If you want to look at more or listen to more podcasts or any other resources, I'll also leave those links down below and uh, I'll see you guys next time in another video.